this is kind of extended the whole club conversation. This is courtesy of Hypebeast. And it says here, Louis Vuitton unveils its pre-spring 2023 Fall in Love collection inspired by the late, great David Mancuso from the legendary Lost Parties in New York. Now, the first thing that strikes me about it is because, again, I'm, a obsess when it, I'm an obsessive geek when it comes to um, the history of club culture, um, dance music and all that malarkey. And I've seen many, many pictures of the heady days of the loft parties that David Mancuso used to do, where he used to have these amazing balloons kind of, you know, hoisted up into the air, um, just in these great airy spaces, which was really bizarre. There's loads of light days to come through, not really dark and shit. And there was a lot of, and they used to basically just have one turntable playing great records on a really amazing sound system. Very different from what you see now. There's not a DJ mixing two things, but from what I can remember, it was always on one turntable and you just be kind of, you know, treating it more like a, like a music bar, like how they have like in Japan and shit, right? Where they have like these bars where you can basically play records on really great sound system, but it's not about mixing, just about playing one great record after the other. And all the pictures of it are always kind of, um, I've always got this kind of shimmery, kind of cloudy effect on it, something similar that you'd maybe see to like in a, in a Mariah Carey video. So I like that they kind of recreated that with Louis Vuitton. And I would imagine um, with Virgil Abloh, R.I.P. being an obsessive about club culture too and being a DJ himself, he probably was the one that maybe spurned this idea um, because he really, really was um, obsessed with kind of tying music to everything that he did. Do you know what I mean? It's basically in his DNA, especially when you consider his um, previous work they did with Kanye, but he really was obsessed with kind of looking into club culture, getting into the weeds of it and really kind of engrossing himself in every element of it. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is something that he basically started off the the nexus of the idea and maybe he didn't finish it maybe it was something that he finished but regardless it looks fucking gorgeous man really really good um and it looks like i'd imagine everything in this collection is inspired by that dj culture and also would serve djs and clubbers alike so you'd imagine the pockets on some of these jackets are big enough to put some headphones in it you know what i mean to put a, to put a bag in it whatever it may be the bags are big enough to put some vinyl in it the bags double up as good bags to carry around with you to put on your back have a hood on it if it's raining and shit so all that kind of good stuff happens but i love everything about this collection really really nice um pre-spring collection and actually it's a probably a better idea of doing a pre-spring sort of like resorty type collection in between seasons because most of those collections i feel like are always kind of fillers but if you want to really maybe because you can afford it if you're like a brand or like a house like louis vuitton it makes more sense to kind of make all these kind of in-between seasons and be a bit more conceptual and kind of just have it be like a theme and have it kind of just so essentially it could be like hiking next time whatever it may be it does have to tie into the overall vision of the brand but it could just be like a set little theme do you know what I mean just to kind of give it a little bit of respite from the overall stuff that goes on the runway and to kind of change it up a little bit um, that might be a good thing and especially for them going forward because they don't have Virgil anymore it might be a good idea to maybe have this be outsourced and then have the main collection designed by the design team and then this kind of always you know be kind of lent out to creative collaborators of his in the past friends and family whatever you know admirers people that might have have some sort of design links to him whatever it may be I think that might be a good way going forward but I do like everything in it to be honest from suits to jeans um, some of the jeans here, the styling tips here, the jeans kind of stuck stuffed in there to the uh, sock. Some great bags, of course, there, which are really nicely done. But yeah, very, very, very well put together, man. I like everything about this collection. Very, very nice. This look here, number 14, might be one of my favourites. Um, and yeah, some of the sunglasses are always incredibly well done as well. Something Virgil do not get enough credit for doing, actually. Loads of really great sunglasses and you know accessories. Probably even stronger than some of the actual ready-to-wear pieces, to be honest. But like even this look here, this red one is fucking sublime, isn't it? I'm not sure about wearing a towel next to a nightclub, but I still like it regardless. The text is as follows. Um, built upon Virgil Zabla's belief that function of a DJ is akin to that of a designer Louis Vuitton has unveiled a pre-spring 2023 Fall in Love collection the couple uncovering range explores how DJs and designers sample established genres to create sounds and looks that resonate with the outlooks of the new generation drawing inspiration from the legendary New York love parties of David Mancuso popularly considered the first DJ ever who passed away I think only a couple of years ago I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken it's important to note the pre-spring collection was conceived by Virgil Abla before his untimely death yo R.I.P. Virgil, man. Virgil's a fucking goat. This man has designed stuff into 20... That's going to be on sale in 2023 and going forward. Or well, 2023. 
that's how much work that he put down and some of us myself included complain about you know editing clips uploading clips tightening clips making thumbnails um preparing mixes um setting up a live stream making zines printing t-shirts like i complain about all that nonsense stuff why like this guy was operating on the highest of highest levels pumping out stuff on his literal deathbed was able to put forth stuff that would live far beyond the time that he was going to be around like ridiculous and i would imagine part of his reason of doing it wasn't because he knew he was going to pass away soon it was just something that he did anyway it wasn't like he was doing anything more like even though i i, I think most of us would agree we did see a shift in virgil's output in terms of him going to gear five it within the last what four years or so it was still nothing dissimilar to what he did prior when he was doing Bintro. He was still operating on Gear 3, Gear 2. He was still cranking out more stuff than more people would ever did. You know I mean, the flyers, like the amount of flyers he did for the amount of appearances and DJ sets he did is fucking insane. I hope somebody put together an archive of all these flyers. The amount of t merch and t-shirt ideas that he did for every little pop-up and activation thing he did was completely insane too. Like he did a lot of shit. Every done stuff on the side, like the designs, consultation and, you know, whatever stuff that he did for clients, like hood by air back in the day that's also wild and he had all that stuff in the in the flipping canister and it's all now going out to the public now and it's going to be in stores in 2023 ridiculous ridiculous level of output that's that's basically i think virgil abloh's legacy forget his work so forget that his actual the finished product but just his work ethic and he's a, and i think mostly his attitude as well because I, I remember re listening to an attitude so listening to an interview with um alpha car the guy that's got all the cars and stuff that hangs around with him and hangs around the people that are in that kind of community and crew and he was talking basically he's said it many many times about how humble virgil was right humble 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 and i guess people said a lot about him because they all know other friends of theirs in that industry or themselves who are absolute cunts and i've known bumped into a few of these guys coming up in the scene myself and they're not the nicest people which you understand why you know they're kind of adults who've essentially got given the keys to the castle and they kind of get indulged by brands and they get paid crazy amounts of money for things that most of us can do because we're all kind of obsessed and love the same things it's not like they're getting paid to do anything dissimilar than what we would know how to do as well so there is a level of there's a level of enabling that happens with it but for the most part a lot of those guys don't have the greatest of attitudes which is understandable but also unpleasant so when they all say that thing about humble it's something that they can't believe because Virgil's at the he's at the top of the mountain and he's still able to to be human he's still able to be cool and chill and have a chat and not be all up his own ass and that really does make a big difference so i think his legacy should be long lasting legacy should be his his work ethic and his attitude it really should be because it's insane that this man is still has all this work getting you know produced on the highest level for us now way way past his passing it's just insane it really is insane um what you call it um the parties were telling of an era dominated by civil rights and counterculture from anti-racism to gender equality and lgbtq plus movement virgil drew inspiration for man's crucial transformative practice of playing records from beginning to end and this continued evolution of dress codes to promote ideas of anti-prejudice and egalitarianism louis vuitton pre-spring fall in love collection develops a complete wardrobe underscored by a sense of dynamic wearability the range effortlessly comes between so it moves between contemporary takes on traditional tailoring outwear styles the streetwear elements come from an opt art ex optical print and the interprets and monograms of lv and musical graphics that adorn the shirts footwear expressions include a blue suede sorry a suede chucker boot a square toed loafer marked by a foam sole and a monogram decorations softer dancing shoes in oxford styles while carrying styles in two ranges the denim is a tan contrast stitching and tourillion denim line and record canvas lines which would present monogram with archive louis vuitton notebooks take a look at the collection above ridiculously good ridiculously ridiculously good so yeah um big up louis vuitton for still putting this stuff out even in his passing and r.i.p virgil long live virgil for absolutely being a beast when it comes to the output man like that's crazy 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 legitimately crazy one absolute genius one absolute talent um gone but never forgotten gone but never forgotten